Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kairos. So I was doing a nice quiet spot of fishing the other day, and I found one of these, a sealed bottle. Now the sealed bottle is something you'll probably come across fairly regularly if you play enough. So you'll probably find maybe one a week if you play maybe an hour or two a day. That seems to be the sort of rate you'll find them. You'll find them more often if you have the fishing perk, supposedly, although to be honest I've never noticed any real difference, so I'm not sure if that's just rumour, to be honest. But people do tell me that, yes, you will more likely get these if you have the fishing perk enabled, and you will also find them in deep water, t typically. Uh, that being said, I've not really noticed any difference. I very rarely use the fishing perk, and I still find plenty of sealed bottles. So I've just come to Atwoods here, up in the north of the map, for a reason that I'll explain right now. We're just going to stop in the harbour for a little bit, under cover of these guns, because of course this is a friendly port for me, and I'm waiting for the wind essentially to turn so I can head north. So when you get a sealed bottle, you're going to want to head out to open waters. So supposing you spawn in Mortimer because you're a pirate player, well, you might be pottering around here, you find yourself your first sealed bottle as a new player. You're like, excellent, what do I do with it? Well, to be honest, the best thing to do is probably sell it because you'll need an Indiaman, or at the very least, you'll need a, a Le Gros Venture to use a sealed bottle because you'll often find lots of wood, rare woods. They take a lot of weight. You'll need a big trade ship to actually carry that wood. Sometimes you'll find other things. You'll find stuff that you can carry in any old warship, perhaps... Uh, I don't know, Northern Carpenters or something like that. You don't need a lot of hold space for those, but you never know. It's just the luck of the draw. So it's best to have the biggest trader in the game, the Indiaman here, before you do any sealed bottle hunting, as it were. So if you find one and you all you've got is a basic cutter, just sell it. It should go for about 1.5 million, maybe a bit more. I've seen them go for 2.5 million, actually, and they do seem to sell. It will depend on where you are, really. Uh, the market will vary depending on where and when you decide to sell it. But in my experience, probably a reasonable price for these is about 1.5 million. Now, supposing you do actually have a ship that can carry all the cargo you may find from the shipwreck when you actually follow this treasure map that we're about to open up here. You might notice I haven't actually opened it yet. Well, that's because... You want to head out to open waters before you open it. Unless you get chased down by a player, then obviously before you get tagged, you want to open it quickly because if you sink, then obviously the player will take this. Whereas if you open it, just right-click use, well, now he can't use it. So you've got you've got the uh, shipwrecker spawn somewhere and he can't take that off you. But he will take the bottle unless you use it in time. So keep it in your hold unless you're being chased down by a player, then use it. Open it up because you don't want someone else taking all your treasure now, do you? Now, the reason that we're waiting to actually open this bottle is because if we say we found it near Mortimer, which is what happened with this one, go to the map here. Say we found it at Mortimer. Excellent. We take it home. We open it. Well, now it might end up spawning you a shipwreck in the Windward Channel, which obviously is not a good place. There's the patrol zone right there. There's going to be players here. You don't want to be heading down to claim your bottle in the Windward Channel. It might even spawn it, God knows, it might spawn it over here. So you'd have to go all the way through British waters to to get to your shipwreck. Say you found it near Willemstead. Well, if you opened it at Willemstead, it might spawn it maybe down here in Polish waters. You might end up having to go all the way through <laughs> through uh, the Golfo de Maracaibo here in which case you will be almost certainly sunk by some other player on your way to collect your treasure. So, what you want to do, say you're at Willemstead, you want to head probably north is the best bet, head out into the Caribbean Sea, and then open the bottle, so that you have the best possible chance of having the bottle spawn, because it will spawn fairly close to you, to wherever you open it. You open it down here, it will spawn somewhere, probably in this sort of area in the Caribbean Sea. You open it all the way up in the Atlantic, it'll spawn somewhere in the general vicinity of the Atlantic. So I would recommend, if you are playing up in the north of the map, say you're an American player or a pirate player, head up into the Atlantic Ocean, and once you're a decent way into the Atlantic, then you open up your sealed bottle. And from there, you'll follow wherever the wind may take you on your way to actually collect 
the treasure out of that particular wreck. So what we're going to do now, the wind should be turning. Yeah, I think we're good with the wind. Is we're actually going to get our Indiaman underway here. And we shall basically just head up out into open waters. And once we're well out of sight of land, we'll pop open our bottle and see where we are going to have to go and pick up our treasure. Okay, I think we have gone far enough north now that we can actually open our bottle. Let's actually slow down a little bit here because we don't know exactly where we're going to be going. We've still got the wind heading in a northeasterly direction, which is good at the moment, but it depends on where this bottle actually spawns, where the shipwreck spawns, I should say. We uh, want to make sure we don't have any previously opened bottles, of course, before we do this. So if you've already got a shipwreck somewhere on the map, you will cancel out. You can't have more than one shipwreck active at a time. It will actually warn you before you do that. We have that wind boost there we can take advantage of if we need to. And you can see we're well out of range of you know, any ports, either friendly, neutral, or enemy. So here is a good spot, I think, to open this bottle. You right click on it, click use. It will ask you if you are sure. It will cancel out any other shipwrecks you might have already had activated on the map. So check before you do that. Assuming you don't, which I don't, then click confirm. And eventually the computer will work out that it's supposed to be doing something and it will, the bottle will disappear. And you now have a Rat Vison, in this case, shipwreck found belonging to Friedrich Bjorn. That is where we want to be going. So we are going to stop sailing north and we're going to tack off or veer off to the southeast. So we're, pff, which way is the wind going? Anti-clockwise, yeah, we're good. This is actually good for us because the wind will continue to spin around and we can now hopefully, hang on a minute. No, the, that's not good for us actually. Sorry, anti-clockwise. The wind is actually going to come and swing around here. So we're going to have to take our time to get there, but that's okay. We're far away north here that we're not going to have to worry too much. So the best thing to do, not worry about enemies finding us so much that that is. So our ship's fairly safe up here, so we can afford to take our time. Let's head in a general sort of Let's pass one tick to the southeast here. Yeah, that'll do. That's the direction we're heading right now. So this wind will spin around and then we can tack through it down to the south again. But that's all good. We have our bottle open. We can now head in that direction, keep our eyes open for enemies and start fishing probably if we wanted to. That's something I haven't been doing because I've been trying to keep down on the clutter, but you never know, you might find another bottle you can take home with you and you can repeat the process all over again. But that's what we're going to be doing, just sailing along. This does take a good, I find it usually takes a good 40 minutes to an hour to collect one of these bottles if you do it properly. So plan ahead, think about where the wind's going and uh, make sure you have a relatively fast roomy ship that you can do this with. I would recommend not worrying about escorts too much. You have to have a trade ship to do this. It's just one of those things that, you know, you're best to do off peak. Just go up with one fast ship, you'll be fine. Make sure you head out to open waters where there are no players around. So let's keep sailing and find that shipwreck. All right, we're getting close now. Managed to catch a wind boost as we were sailing down here. And as you can see, we're getting really lucky with this one because we actually have another wind boost right on top of the shipwreck. So it should be here on the horizon. There she is, over there. Now they all look like Indiamen, regardless of what they are. This one is actually a Rat Vison. So hopefully there'll be some good loot in there. We'll come up nice and close to her and have a look, see what's inside. And we've got this wind boost here we can grab on the way back. All right, we have come to a stop next to this shipwreck. And as you can see, we have already explored it and we have a total of 981 units of weight on board. We need four slots to take everything, which we have. We have 
861 units of white oak log. We have six Guatemala saltpeter, one book, the complete fencing master, which is nice to have. And we have some French perfume as well, six units of it. We can take this. So what you really want to do, I've already done this, but before you take this lot, you will have to look around, make sure there are no players in the area. Just have a good old look on the horizon, explore the shipwreck, and then you have the option to either leave it here. It'll still be there. If you decide you don't want to take it right now, you say, okay, I'll come back for it later. It will still be here. So you can just explore the wreck and then leave it alone. But in this case, we're going to actually click take. We know what's in there. We know we have enough and it'll take a couple of seconds for it to do its thing. And there we go. Boom. We now have all of that lovely stuff on board along with some fish that we've been picking up along the way. So there you go. We have white oak. We have Guatemala saltpeter. We have our book here, the complete fencing masters, and we have the perfume everything we could possibly want on board this Indiaman here, that's definitely worth taking back to our port. In my case, we're just going to take it straight back to Mortimer Town because that's where I'm going to store my stuff for now. I can send it to my ports, depending on which resource I have later on. But let's just get underway now and head back down south towards civilized waters, let's say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is why... You always keep fishing when you're on these long voyages. I was just pulling into uh, Laura Mare down here, but as you can see, we are now heading back in the northeast direction towards this uh, wind boost. Because just as I was pulling into Laura Mare, we found another sealed bottle. So I'm going to head back up north and actually open this. We might as well, why not? Now, if you're concerned about players, you might want to just head home with what you've got and come back later with this bottle. But seeing as I'm already up near the Atlantic, I might as well continue our voyage and we can go and see if we can fit all the treasure in this one ship and make this a bit of a uh, adventure. We are obviously putting all our eggs in one basket here and a single Indiaman on its own like this is pretty vulnerable. But I think it's worth it just because of where we are. We're fairly safe from players up here. We need to grab that wind boost before we overshoot. There we go. And we'll just head a little further northeast and then I'll pop open this bottle here and we shall see if we can fit everything in this hold in the one ship. We may end up getting like 2,000 units of wood and we might have to come back again, but we've barely got a third of the ship hold full here. So we should have enough room for two, for two shipwrecks full of goodies. Let's continue on our voyage. It's going to be a long one, but I think it's going to be a very profitable one. Let's hope we don't crash into any players along the way. All right, I think we're definitely far enough north now. So let's open her up and see what's, see where it's going to send us. Check the map. And that's nice. We can tack back down towards um, Mayaguana here. And that will, that's actually on the way home. So that's perfect for us. We'll turn the ship around now. The wind is not in our favor at the moment, so we'll probably just head uh, sort of in a general northwesterly direction for now. But uh, we'll keep fishing. You never know, we might find yet another bottle, which would be absolutely hilarious. I think I did find three in one day once before, but that's a very rare occurrence, finding two within the space of, you know, 24 hours. That's pretty, pretty rare. Actually, I have had that bottle for a little while, I think. The first one, that is. But... Uh, yeah, still, it's it's unusual to find two bottles in one hold, that's for sure. So that's been a very successful voyage so far. Assuming we can get all this good stuff back home, we're going to be considerably wealthier than we were when we left, that's for sure. All right, the wind is in our favor now, which is good. There's a wind boost over there, which we might want to take advantage of if we can. Somewhere here, there it is, right on top of us. There's a shipwreck. We need to be looting or salvaging, I suppose, technically. This one is a basic lynx, apparently, even though it doesn't look like a basic lynx. Maybe one day they'll actually bother to model some new shipwrecks. That's okay. There should be still some goodies in here, even if it is a smaller ship. So we'll come to a stop, more or less here. That'll do. Let's have a look inside. We click explore. 
We're going to check the horizon. Just quickly. Nothing seems to be out there, so that's good. And we can have a look here. See, because this is a smaller ship, it's a lot less to take back. But what we do have is actually really good. We've got only 83 units of weight. We need three slots, which is nice and easy for us. Eight units of green heart, which is a very uh, rare timber, I think. That's a crafting... Actually, I'll have to look that up. I'm not sure what green heart is off the top of my head. Spanish square sails. That's uh, another crafting resource. We want that. And diploma d'artillerie. That's fantastic. We've got a whole 15 units of that. We can use those to make really nice upgrades back at port. Assuming, of course, you're a crafter, which I am for this particular character. This particular... This is my main account. So, yeah, I can use all of that stuff. Definitely wanting to be taking that with us. Let's have one more look on the horizon. Doesn't seem to be anything there. Let's take that. And we'll double check it's all in the hold. Once it spawns, there we go. Yep, fantastic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is actually a, a rare wood. I don't know why, why we've only got eight units of it, but there you go. Greenheart, Spanish square sails, fantastic to have. And these, I'm particularly happy to have these, Diploma d'artillery. We can use these to create uh, gunners, I think, French gunners. So, wonderful stuff. Let's get underway before we get ganked and head up to that wind boost if we can. No, we can't get that. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. We may have to... We may have to stop... Let me just think about this for a moment. This is the, the planning the wind part here. It's all... We could probably head in a general southwesterly direction for now. If we absolutely have to, we could always stop at Parrot Key for a while. Let's see if we can make it to Parrot Key. Not quite. Probably not. Alright, depending which way the wind goes, we'll continue along sort of a general southwesterly direction. This should continue to spin around anti-clockwise, so we should get a better wind by the time we actually get into this, this strait here between Parrot Key and Ma... Uh, Mayaguaya here. Mayaguana, sorry. Alright, let's continue down this way and hopefully we'll have a decent win by the time we get to about this point here and we can just go straight along back to Mortimer Town, which is where I really want to drop all my stuff because that's kind of my... well, that's where I dump a lot of my gear before I disperse it to my various crafting ports. So, we shall head in that general direction. Yeah, we're definitely going to get a good wind for it. We don't have the wind boost, unfortunately. I'd like to go over and get that, but... Yeah. My iguana is also a shallow water port, so we couldn't go in there if we had to. This is the sort of thing you have to do when you're pl planning your voyages. You've got some good loot. You need to think of where you're going to go. If you see a player appear on the horizon, which way are we going to be going? Are we going to be running to Parrot Key? Are we going to run to a wind boost? Are we going to just stay and fight? What are we going to do? We need to be thinking about which direction the wind is going, and we need to be planning accordingly. But the wind is definitely going to be in our favour very soon. So already we've actually got pretty good wind, more or less beam reach. So we can make it back to Mortimer without too much trouble, I hope. And we are safely back in Mortimer Town, ladies and gentlemen. We're actually outside in the harbour right now, but I'm not concerned at all because we have the capital area, in this case, to protect us. Because this, of course, is the pirate starting location. I did see a Spaniard hanging out there, but I managed to give him the slip. I think it was a Lerequin. He got himself caught by the home defence fleet, so <laughs> we don't have to worry about him. But we're safe and sound now in our port or near our port of Mortimer. And we have plenty of good stuff to put in our warehouse when we get back in there. Greenheart, nice to have. We have plenty of white oak. We have Guatemala, saltpeter, diploma d'artillery. This is all worth a lot. So these logs here, these white oak logs, if you're not planning to become a crafter, you could easily sell these for at least 3000 per log, at least. Probably more. So... Yeah, you go do the math. That's quite a lot of reales right there. These, I don't know how much these will go for, but I'd say you probably find these for 50 to 100,000 at least. 
Diplomat Artillery, same with the Salt, uh, Guatemala Saltpeter. These books, this book here will probably go for 250,000 at least. Yeah, there's plenty of, there's plenty of reales in this, in this ship. So you've got lots of good stuff to trade with other players. As long as you find a decent port with a good market, you can sell that stuff or you can hold on to it and get into crafting. So that is how you find and use sealed bottles in this game. I hope that was moderately entertaining for you guys. This has been Kairos, and I'll see you all next time. Catch you later.